Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on 9 News Watch for a look at your headlines. On this Friday, September the 10th, I'm Chris Bianchi, and we'll start things out on this Friday by taking a look back at those top stories that we saw from this week. Here's a look at some of those. We have new developments in an amusement park death investigation. Investigators say the haunted mine drop at Glenwood's Caverns passed its last state inspection. 9 News reporter Darius Johnson is live in the studio with us this morning. And Darius, investigators still aren't sure what exactly happened. Hey there, Natasha. Good morning. Yes, state investigators were at the park on Tuesday morning working to determine exactly what happened. They say that this investigation could go on for weeks as they try to nail down how a little girl didn't leave a ride alive. It started off as a normal Labor Day weekend at Glenwood Caverns. And we were kind of sitting around the curb on the walkway because the mine was our next drive we were going to go get on. Reese Ziegler and her mom were waiting to get on the hunted mine drop before things turned chaotic Sunday. We just hear a bunch of screaming and we can't really figure out what it's from. We think it's just from like the mine of like, oh, they dropped. That's a scary ride. They're screaming. But there was a lot more to it when she saw the frantic response. The Adventure Park employees um, running around the curb, running down the hill to get to the mine. And one lady runs through with a bag full of rope and a helmet. And that's kind of we're like, oh shoot, something bad actually really did happen. A six year old girl died while on the ride. The coroner says she had multiple blunt force injuries. A young man, I guess, running the ride was standing up against the wall and somehow we had ended up right behind him. And he had said, I don't know what happened. I had buckled her in. The ride opened in 2017 and drops you 110 feet down a mine shaft and was designed without shoulder harnesses. But according to the state's labor department, it meets state regulations based on the past inspections. But that doesn't ease the burden on the family now suffering the loss of their little girl. And they were all obviously very distraught over what had happened and they didn't even really know what happened. They just know that the ride had came back up without her on it. They were all in a huddle. I mean, obviously very distraught, like falling on their knees crying. Now, now the state adds that manufacturers make recommendations on how a ride should be operated. Sometimes operators can go above those recommendations if need be. But Natasha, it's unclear if that includes safety concerns. However, we'll, we are still trying mm -hmm. to figure out how that ride was being operated on Sunday. Yeah, exactly. Just such a sad situation. Darius, thank you. Within the last hour, President Biden announced sweeping new vaccine mandates affecting as many as 100 million people in the U.S two thirds of the country's workforce. The federal government will mandate all employers with more than 100 workers require them to be vaccinated or tested weekly. The president will also require vaccination for all federal employees with no testing opt out. Well, the more than 208 million people in the US have had at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. 80 million people in the United States still remain unvaccinated. The president said today that many people in the U.S. are frustrated and at times he too sounded frustrated himself. My message to unvaccinated Americans is this. What more is there to wait for? What more do you need to see? We've made vaccinations free, safe and convenient. The vaccine is FDA approval. Over 200 million Americans have gotten at least one shot. We've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin, and your refusal has cost all of us. So please do the right thing. Also, to help address COVID-19 cases in kids, the president also calling upon schools to set up regular testing and called on the state's governors to require vaccinations for teachers and school staff. A team from Colorado helping with the cleanup after Hurricane Ida is heading home. Colorado Task Force One just wrapped up their work in Grand Isle and in New Orleans. The team helped with search and rescue operations. They delivered fresh water to a group of horses. Teams expected to arrive back in Denver on Tuesday. Colorado State Patrol says a van hit the guardrail on the northbound side of I-25 just south of the Firestone Boulevard exit near Longmont. The van rolled over and spilled glass jars of salsa all over the road. Unfortunately, our CDOT cameras couldn't see the spill, but you can see the back up here right now. That driver was a 57 year old man and it, he was the only person in the vehicle at the time. His injuries were minor, thankfully, and crews were able to clean up the mess and had most of the highway back open within an hour. But something to note, still moving pretty slow in that area right now.
After record-breaking temperatures on Thursday and Friday in Denver, it does look to be at least a little bit cooler for the weekend ahead with a high in the low 90s for your Saturday in Denver. Unfortunately, that smoke and that haze will continue, but we do see temperatures go down a little bit more as we get into your Sunday with highs in the mid to upper 80s. That said, Sunday afternoon could feature a few isolated showers and thunderstorms with a greater chance in the mountains for some of those. Next week, we will stay mostly in the 80s, though we do get a cool down by Tuesday with highs likely only topping out in the 70s by next Tuesday. So our first little bit of a taste of fall arriving next week. That'll do it for your nine news headlines on this Friday, September the 10th. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you right back here on Monday. I'm Chris Bianchi, and again, have a great weekend ahead.